We're here at Gerber. We finally made it in the building, and I have Andrew, who is the GM of Gerber, with me. Thanks for having us, man. Our I pleasure. I absolutely love being here. Yeah. Um, it is my first time to see this place. It's huge. It's a big building. Yep. That, that's awesome. Um, let me ask you this. Sure. Um, how did you get to Gerber Gear? Because we noticed that on yeah. the building, and we noticed that the legendary blades had disappeared, and now yep. the Gerber Gear is on the building. Yep. Well, Gerber is a pretty dynamic business. We're a lot more than just knives, although that is kind of core to what we do. Uh, but Gerber Legendary Blades was the business name up until about 2011 when we right. threw a big rebrand and introduced our new logo. And part of what we were trying to accomplish was uh, not confuse consumers that were interested in our multi-tools or tomahawks or tactical pens right. or axes that right. you know a knife company made this. And so a big part of our product development lens and innovation uh, kind of prevented us from wanting to use legendary blades because it felt so narrow. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we put the question out to yeah. our fan group on Facebook and on other spots. What would you ask Gerber? If we could ask Gerber anything out there, what we could ask? Now, you probably know what came up. Sure. I showed you the questions there. Oh, and yeah. you know, I want to just address the elephant in the room because the quality issue comes mm -hmm. up every time. They want to talk about bare grills. Yep. They want to talk about imported knives. Mm -hmm. And they want to talk about the quality standards <laughs> of Gerber. So let's talk about it. We should talk about that. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I was sharing with you earlier about Gerber is that we've got this this breadth of offering and product categories mm -hmm. that is so broad and so unique that um, it's really hard to kind of benchmark that against any of the, the other brands that you see in the space. And I'll give you a couple of examples of that, sure. right? So you've got Gerber using and working with Bear Grylls to develop an innovative line of survival products designed mm -hmm. for the mass market. And you find that at you know Walmart and right. Amazon, right? So you've right. got all these new consumers flooding in that have never been a really you know a knife consumer in the in the past, and this is kind of their first experience with that knife. Right. Right. So you're kind right. of bringing in this entry level of consumer into the category, which is really exciting. Right. And you see things like you know Seven CR steel, and it's made overseas, right? Right. To reach a price point that's accessible right. for that consumer. So mm -hmm. we've been very successful at that, and that benefits the whole industry and category. We believe. Right. Now on the other side, you've got where the you know one of the longest standing and the largest direct supplier of knives and multi tools to the U.S. military. So right. whether it's standard issue multi tools like the MP600, or it's automatic knives like the O6 automatic or, or right, soon to be the right, propel. Right. Now you've got $150 American made military grade, like the, you know, the most durable products in the world, arguably right. by the presence of it in the mm -hmm. military. And so you've got mass retail and import products at 40 bucks. Then you got this $150 American made hardcore right. stuff. And then you got this suite of products that go in the sporting goods retailers like axes and shovels and e-tools. Right. And then you got stuff that you might find at Home Depot or anywhere else. So when you think about Gerber, you're not talking about there, there is a huge breadth of things that are out there. I think yeah. that's what I said to you earlier. Sure. Is that it's hard for me in my mind to go, what is Gerber? Yep. And I can't think specifically of one thing. A tool yeah, comes to mind. Totally. Uh, the fishing stuff comes to mind. All of those things yep. come to mind. Now, you told me that there's a breakdown in percentage of what's coming in imported and what is coming uh, being made right here in Portland. So yep. what is that breakdown? It's about exactly 50% at the moment. So do right. you think people would think that if we if we put that to online right now? Do you think people would think that? I would say based on the post that you made on Smokey's page obviously not right. but also you know that in social media which there's many there's that title that, wave that That's a lot right. of people are pretty quick to just make a statement and you know that may or may not be right. accurate so right. has Gerber done an incredible job of uh, amplifying its American made presence over the years probably right. not right. and it's actually been a big part of what our initiatives are lately and you'll see it in our product category right. but we have been increasing the number of American made mm -hmm. products we've been introducing more products with higher quality materials and steel right and that's a lot in part to meet the consumer demand that we think is present. Right. And I think that what you saw in your social post probably just reflects that. Yeah, and I think there is yeah. always going to be that pile on sure. effect. And I also yeah. think that people don't, once they have something locked in their mind, it's hard to change it. Sure. And so I think that's where we are right now with Gerber. We had a huge success with Bear Grylls. Mm -hmm. I, I remember when all the Bear Grylls stuff yeah. came out. I mean, it was just a massive yeah. success. But then, of course, like everything else, yeah. you poo poo on it just a little bit, sure. and then it goes downhill. So. I look at things that are coming out right now. I look at mm -hmm. uh, different, even the import stuff that is sure. just massively huge right now. Yeah. I cannot keep a flat iron in yeah. stock, yeah. right? That is a, a great knife. And you look at the other automatics, the Propel, and the things mm -hmm. that are coming out like that are the American-made. They're, they're just fabulous yeah. knives. I know that we played with the, uh, I believe it's called the Spine and yep. the Vertebra. Those are great little yep. bushcrafter knives. And different from other bushcrafter stuff that's on the Absolutely. market right now. Yeah. You're talking about not your normal standard wood bushcrafter knife. You're mm -hmm. looking at something that falls in a great price range and has a nice grippy, uh, rubberized handle. 
I just love that thing. That's great. So let's right. like, so if you use that as an example, right? right? So you're talking about knives. Gerber's gonna make knives. And right. everybody has a different point of view on what a great knife is. And the first thing they usually attribute it to is their experience with knives. So if you're the kind of person that carries a really high-end pocket knife, right? right? Then mm -hmm. you're looking for a brand that creates that offering. Yes. And I was talking about how big and broad Gerber's kind of brand is across product categories. And the way that we've become that impactful for the marketplace is by always focusing on the consumer mm -hmm. or the end user. So we're looking at the bushcraft market. We're looking at camping knives, you know, right. the typical REI shopper or anybody mm -hmm. else. And you see a trend of European style knives coming up that are shorter and stubbier. And right. Some of this is influenced by product restrictions in global marketplaces. Right. right. And so you look at this and you go, wow, this is plastic. It's not a high quality steel and there's mm -hmm. not a lot of ergonomics in it. Right. So Gerber hyper focuses down on that consumer target. We understand mm -hmm. all the attributes. We do focus groups. We right. know where they shop. We know what their price points are. We know what they're really looking for in a knife. Right. And then we create something incredible within that need. And you get the spine, which right. is rubber grip. There's no hot spots. Right. The sheath attaches to your backpack strap. That backpack sheath is amazing. Now, I'm just going to say this. No, no, it was not yeah. an accident. And the more yeah. I played with it, the more I realized you could you could actually put that deep inside through your pack. The uh, the clip on that thing is nice and long yep. on the sheath. Yeah. It clicks in. You know it's locked in. Yep. The size of the lanyard hole in yeah. the back with the brass casing yeah, that goes yeah. all the way through. Uh, I mean, it's just a really nice setup. Yep. I think you guys put a lot of mm. uh, thought into your products that uh, other people may not in this sure. industry, but I also think you get, uh, you know, just kind of put upon a little bit because yeah. people think in their mind, oh, I wish my Gerber was what it used to be. Yeah. Somehow this thing happened, and yeah. whether that's Beer Girls or whatever it is, somehow this thing happened. And I, I would love for us to get back to a spot where people go, oh, there is your mm. Gerber. But here's the thing you were telling mm. me. If you're in police, if you're uh, law yeah. enforcement, if you're military, you're already right there. At the end of the day, uh, people's perceptions of a brand or a company are based largely on what information has come to them from right. their peers or whatever blogs they read or social media sites they follow, what retailers they go to. Right. What retailers exactly. they go to. Exactly. Exactly. So, but yeah, you're looking at, uh, if you look, talk to a soldier or a Marine, ask them what their experience right. with the Gerber was. You're going to get an entirely different story than somebody who right. maybe shops at the local Walmart on the weekend right. and goes outside. So, so part of it is um, always on the responsibility of the company and the organization to do the right thing. Right. And that needs to be balanced through marketing communications and branding and whatnot, but also product introductions. And what I would challenge people to do is do a little bit of research. Right. Go to GerberGear.com and peruse the site. Go right. to Smokey. Talk to a retail right. associate Absolutely. About it, see what they know. Right. Because if you're only looking at a little bit of social media sites or you're only looking at what you saw at Walmart four years ago, you haven't really right. done the work. No, and I know? think that's so important to try it out. Yeah. I mean, uh, the good thing about being a business like we are being in so long is we have great return mm -hmm. uh, uh, systems and all of that. Yeah. So get it and try it. Yeah, absolutely. Put it in your hand. I, I think I think that's what I feel every time. I know you've been nice enough to give us several strong arms to give away. Yeah. We did that on National Knife Day. Yeah. Just know that I pull it out of the box <laughs> and I play with it in yeah, my yeah. office for a little while. That's great. That is a solid built, real yeah. deal knife. Yeah. I mean, that is the real deal. And if you've not held one, that is something yeah, that you really need to do. So. Totally. Nice. And that's great. And that's an incredible product made in America with mm -hmm. a patented innovative sheath. Completely right. new view yes. on how to carry the knife in the yes. marketplace. And it's like $65. Right. $65. Right. So people have access to that, especially the people it was primarily designed for, which is soldiers. Right. Who we don't get that. make a hundred grand right. a year. Right. And we get know? that all the time. So. I carried the strong arm in my last yeah, tour, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And yeah, they, yeah. they loved it. Yeah. They absolutely loved it. So those are some of the best, I think, the best examples of Gerber products in the marketplace today. And you're going to continue to see stuff like that come from us. It's high quality. It's American made. It's innovative. But it's not jewelry. If you're looking for right. a knife that's going to be equivalent to some kind of Rolex watch, then that's, right. there's a lot of really great companies that right. offer $300 things with special colored liners and whatnot. And I'm, I like that market. Right. Okay? But when you talk about creating value for consumers, we look at it through what they need, which mm -hmm. includes their price point, material considerations, the actual usage, mm -hmm. right? And that's what shapes product innovation through Gerber. So right. could we develop an incredible knife for $400? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But that's couldn't, not couldn't the goal. anybody at that point, That's right? not the goal. Right. The goal right. is to create products that people can rely on and value. I was showing you a photo just a minute ago. We had sure. a, a, a trooper send us this really long uh, letter along with a couple of photos and he pulled his buddy out of a rollover in the middle of the night with his Propel Auto. Right. Right? And yes. it, he's just, 
he didn't want to spend three hundred dollars on a knife he was going right. to just damage you know right. and actually it held up but i think and this is why i, I don't think i showed you this this is my propel auto this yes. is five years old this thing is absolutely beat to hell i i have dropped this off mountainsides right right i mean you can see it's all burred up but you know what it is reliable, dependable, and I don't wince at all when I have to right. cut something, no Absolutely. matter what it is. I view this as a tool and right. I intend to use it right. for any task I need. That's the kind of reliability you're gonna get from Gerber. Right. And all of it, whether it's $15 or 175, right. has a lifetime warranty. Right. Now, you know, call the warranty department, you're gonna get a new knife like that. That's, that's awesome. the kind of promise we offer. That's you awesome. Know? So that's great. So um, I appreciate you jumping into that quality issue. Sure. What's coming in the future for Gerber? Oh, I can't tell you that kind of stuff, man. Uh, you, you, can't tell me, <laughs> you can't give me any little tidbits. Where, where, are, yeah, we gonna, I, where are we going to focus? I would say that you're going to see uh, an increased emphasis on higher quality American-made products, okay. which you can already see happening sure. today, right? But what you're going to see is um, a continuation of that. And you're also going to see, I think, some of the more profound innovation as it comes to problem-solving solutions and kind of some of our core activities. Mm -hmm. So if you think about like who the diehard Gerber consumer is, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, certain Service members, soldiers, Marines, airmen, mm -hmm. uh, whatnot. It's also hunters and sportsmen and fishermen, right? right? So this is a little outside the lens of the smoky pocket knife audience, but right. you know, you look at our fishing product line. No, I mean, no, and we carry all of that at smkw.com. Oh, yeah. okay, and, and then we actually covered that on our Guys Talk Knives yeah. show. It was one of the most impressive things that I'd seen recently uh, that was not a particularly a knife, was the Defender. It's sure. a large Defender. Uh, the, the capabilities that it had mm -hmm. just to lock that onto a strap and yep. then lock something a tool where it could be out and useful and then zipped back to where yeah, it would yeah. be. That kind of stuff is awesome. Which totally has application beyond fishing. But, Absolutely. You, know, you look at the fishing market, it's enormous. It's one of the biggest like activities of outdoor right. outdoor activities there are. And you know what you see is you see a whole lot of fillet knives, usually mm -hmm. very low price point and mm -hmm. sharp plastic packaging. And then you mm -hmm. see some really higher end gear, but nobody kind of like lensed in and said like, wow, what about these expeditionary adventure style anglers? And right. so what you have is a suite of products that are, go from knives to tools to tethers to right. things that didn't even exist, like right. a line driver. Right. And they all solve problems problems for the adventure minor angler. And, we played around you know. with the Gerber Gutsy on an yeah. episode. I mean, that's, that's a good. great little tool. Sure, yeah. Perfect if you're going out in the water and you don't want to carry yeah. all your stuff. Yeah. Standing out there and there's your Gutsy right there yep. in the pack or on your in your pocket. Yeah, and it's about doing more with less. Increasing your capabilities, but not increasing your load. Nice. Right, you know? Nice. So that, you look at that fishing market, you see that with hunting with Gerber mm -hmm. products, like the vital, ex safest exchange of blade on the market, right. bar none. And then you're gonna see higher end premium price point, um, American made. Knives like mm -hmm. our auto right, right. like the Empowers, which are great, and the Center Drive. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, if oh, you yeah. haven't it's heard about the Center Drive, no, it's you're, a great tool. Uh, <laughs> you've been sleeping under a rock, right? right. So, so you're going to see you get really good core products, but you're also going to see us do like really, uh, I think what we've established now is truly innovation in the marketplace. Nice. And you hear the word innovation a lot, but right. you know everybody has a different definition of what that is. But introducing products that didn't exist right. for a consumer is my definition of innovation. Right. And so I think you'll continue to see that from us. Well, I appreciate you talking yeah. to us. I know that our customers are going to appreciate yep. your honesty and your candor yeah, about your product yeah. line and all of that's out there. Yeah. Uh, I hear we get to go on a tour. We're going to go see. We're going to go see the plant right now. You're going to see how big it is awesome. and how robust Again, it is. So. I appreciate you yeah, coming. It's my Let pleasure. Me do this. Okay, I'm here on the floor at Gerber Factory, at Gerber Gear. I'm with Tommy. Tommy's been nice enough to take us around. He's actually going to trust me to try to build something. What are we doing, Tommy? So first we're going to put together some impromptu pens. So show me what we're doing. Alright, so I'll build this one while you build that one. Okay. So what I prefer to do is I put the end of the pen together first. Take your actuated assembly. You're going to slide it through. Okay. Get the, yep. You're ahead of me now. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on the end. Okay. Got the Loctite right here. I'm going to let you do that. Alright. That will take a whole lot. Okay. Now we take this frame. Okay. Put it over. You take your actuator cap. Okay. Thread that on to that piece of the top. On. Right. That basically down the foundation for our mechanism. Okay. And now we're going to assemble basically the pen. Okay. The rest of the pen. So you take that piece uh -huh. and the pen shell. You drop it into here. Then it's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky because we got multiple parts lined up. We gotta put the pen clip on this, thread it into here, and make sure everything's lining up. Okay. So here we go. 
here. You hear that? Turns all up. Now before we get too ahead of ourselves, we need to block that on these threads. Okay. We're gonna go back to that. Yep. Hit me good, Tommy. Hit me good. Okay. Now we're gonna thread it in. Hopefully, I need to thread it. <laughs> all the way down. Okay. All right. Now we can take the special pen, which is this is the right wing key cartridge. Right. Drop that in there. Okay. And we can take your pen tip. Right. Put that in. Before we screw it all the way down, we do need to take a little bit of grease and put that on the oil rig. Okay. Everybody just needs a good greasy o ring. Yeah, yeah. Grease me up, Tommy. That grease is there to make sure the o ring actually seals and keeps out the grease. Oh. There you go, you did it. There's the easy one. Ha ha ha! That's number one, baby, right there.